I have my own stage name, which is Claudia Egypt. Why Egypt? Because I was conceived in Egypt. So the short version is conceived in Egypt, born in Rome, raised in England, suffered in India, reborn global. So that takes you up to about the age of 28, right? I'm a theatre maker. <laughs> it just is. I mean, you, you, d you work with what you've got uh, where you are. And the beauty of being older and still doing it is that, A, you can see all the patterns. And, so, and you're not invested in the same degree with it as when you are first doing it. When we first did the walk, you know, I was you know, 27 and I had a... I was 28. Actually, I'd just come back from India where I'd had a cosmic uh, rebirth. So I kind of felt I knew exactly what was going on, which I don't think a lot of the other people involved in the show did. They didn't have a clue, but I knew what was going on. Um, and, you know, th there's a time when you look at people, since I'm, I have to use a modern word now, you know, since I'm cisgendered, cis female mostly. So when you see someone and you fancy them and, you know, you get a, a knot in your stomach and you think, oh, you may not end up doing anything about it, but you definitely are in that level of the game. And now I'm not, which is a great relief in a lot of ways. So you can see people caught in it and it's absolutely vital. You know, am I going to have a baby or not? You know, your friends in their 30s say, and it becomes, you know, it's a major issue for them. So a lot of that stuff's sorted and you're, you're just able to appreciate the beauty of youth without wanting to seize it. It's, it's quite present for me at the minute because I am writing a play almost in response to the warp, which, as I said, was the poet's journey through life, a seeker from the mid-50s to about the 80s. And I'm writing The Wolf, which is you know, a female seeker's journey, probably from the... I'm younger than Neil Oram, who wrote The Warp by about 15 years. So it's a slightly later time period, but... You do the warp and you keep saying, oh, what's the great revelation going to be at the end of this? And actually, there isn't one. I mean, it's the longest shaggy dog <laughs> story. <laughs> because, you know, until it's completely over, you don't know, do you? So I guess what keeps me going is that I still have a sense of wonder and uh, adventure about th uh, the future, even though I'm aware that my future is, you know, it's a lot close <laughs> closer to termination than it was. So time becomes more precious. When you reflect back, does it feel like a successful... It feels like very enjoyable. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's a success. I'm in a one-room uh, shelf in Camden Town. Um, but, yeah, no, I don't, I don't regret a minute of it, actually. So that's probably why I'm happy now, because I'm not frustrated in terms of expressing my own creativity and sharing that with other people. And I've written plays that people have performed and it's really fun to get people to, to agree to play. I was obviously brought up in a totally patriarchal situation. I mean, my pa, pa was a vicar and, and he had like lots of daughters, only one son. I don't think he... So I was very much aware that y you had separate roles. Women did these things and men did that things, you know. I should learn, uh, get a career of some sort, but only till I got married, really, because I would be getting married and having children, because that, that was the career option all my sisters followed. But I just missed it because of timing, you know, and the electric Kool-Aid acid test and psychedelics. I am actually of the Church of Psychedelics. I say I smoke marijuana, I do, but it's psychedelics that changed my life. And so I was around for that. and. It was like, after I travelled in the realms of gold, if you like, I'm only quoting Keats because someone just said it to me recently. But you do, you silent, wild surmise on a peak in Darien. I mean, like, we were offered a completely new world. And it was marvellous, and it still is. And I think it saved me because I had a lot of... Uh, trauma to overcome in some ways and I had to go to India and go mad and get locked up in the mental hospital <laughs> <laughs> but I have an official certificate of sanity so <laughs> well 
that I'm happiest in myself. Yeah, I can spend. A, you know, I spend a lot of time here. And I can amuse myself with my own stuff. But I like people. I don't know. No, basically, if you if if you learn to live with yourself, and that is obviously by the time you get to seventy, you have to. You're who you are, and you've done a, all the things you're doing. But so yeah, no, I'm basically, I'm not an unhappy person. No, it's partly because. I have a partner. It does make it's helpful to have somebody who is absolutely in your corner. And for a lot of my life, I'd think, oh, you know, I, I am connected, and I I know all these people, and I've got a group of people, but there's nobody that's. Um, so it takes it's taken years to get to this. But if I feel myself, I think, well, you know, actually, Claudia, you are kind of happy most of the time. <laughs> I cry a lot. But I, you know, I, I cry for the world. I could cry. I could spill it if you wanted. I just have to look at a polar bear. <laughs> Which is why. So I cry every day looking at Twitter feet. And that's very irritating. It's frustrating. So therefore, I do go out on the streets. In fact, I would. There's a big march. I don't know. But being active, going out there sometimes, that does help. But then I've always been able to cry very easily, you know. So, <laughs> so cause John Higgs, uh, he just wrote a book. What did he write? He just wrote this, William Blake Now, Why He Matters uh, More Than Ever. And he wrote a piece about, I think it was about the Beatles yesterday. And I saw him, I said, oh, it was very good. I said, it made me cry. And he said, oh, it's quite chuffed. He told another friend, Kate, said, oh, Claudia cried when she remembered. I said, oh, don't worry, Claudia cries so easily. Claudia and I have cried over a green sweater. Because <laughs> it's so soft. <laughs> Masturbation released my soul. I'm not frustrated anymore. Nobody else can make me come like this. I wish I'd known about it before. Feelings pass from my fingers through my body to my mind. I know how to do it. So I'm coming all the time, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs>